Okay, so before I actually get, get into doing it, let's, let's talk a little bit about the idea behind this. Is that, uh, let's say, um, I draw a rough sketch of uh, this, this graph. And let's say this graph looks something like this. Okay, and so this is a just a very rough sketch, but uh, let's say you're you're looking for uh, the absolute maximums and minimums of this function from uh, zero to let's say here three. And so if you notice here, I mean. The idea is that since you're on a closed interval, so you only want to look at from 0 to 3. So it's kind of like you have this uh, mental block and it's only on uh, 0 to 3. Now if you look here, um, the absolute maximum would be the absolute largest value, largest y value that your function can attain. Well if you compare notice that this the absolute maximum happens right here at this endpoint because at this endpoint it's lower so this would be the absolute maximum and that happens at an endpoint okay but then the absolute minimum well that's obviously this one down here and this happens at a local minimum. Now remember, local minimum. Um, this is a spot where the derivative is equal to zero because the slope of the tangent line is zero. And so that's the idea is that you have to first find all the critical points because that tells you where the uh, local maximums or minimums are. And then you're going to compare those with the values of the function at the endpoints because those could be maybe uh, larger or smaller. And so that's the approach that we're going to take here. And that's the general idea. But you don't really need the graph to be able to answer these questions. You can just use calculus. And so let's do the first part the to find the critical points. Uh, we need to first find the derivative and then set it equal to zero to solve it and so uh, the derivative of this one it's pretty simple it's just 3x squared minus 3 and remember the critical points are uh, where the derivative is either zero or undefined this is a polynomial so it's not undefined anywhere so we're just going to set it equal to zero and solve it. And if we do that, we're going to get that x squared is equal to one. And when we get the square root of both sides, we're going to have a positive and a negative. So these are the two critical points, x equals one and x equals negative one. Okay, but notice that um, this guy, uh, negative 1, is outside of my interval. And because here it starts from, uh, zero, it only goes from 0 to 3. So this one I don't really, I don't really have to check this time around. Okay, but I do have to check for the value at 1, so let's do that. So when x equals 1, y equals 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 plus 1. And so this is equal to 1 minus 3 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Okay, and then remember our idea is that we compare this value with the endpoint. So we have to figure out the values of the function 
at the endpoints. So this is now the second step. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. And the last one, we're going to plug in 3. So when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 3 cubed minus 3 times 3 plus 1. So this is equal to 3 cubed, which is 27, minus 9, which is 18, plus 1 is 19. Okay, and so you look at these and you look for the smallest one out of all three of these. Well, that's this one. This would be your absolute minimum. And this would be our absolute maximum. And so we say that the absolute minimum occurs at the point 1, negative 1, and the absolute maximum occurs at 3, 19. And that's it.